Thank you for renting from Easy Camper Rental. This is a walkthrough of the Forest River 17JW, which is a 19-foot bunkhouse with a slide out. It is a 19-foot box length and a 24-foot total length. A few days prior to your pickup, you will receive an email with online documents to sign. Once you have signed and finalized those documents, you will receive a final email with the exact pickup location which you have chosen and a code for the lockbox for the keys. The drop-off location will be the same as the pickup location unless otherwise agreed. Please return the camper clean inside and outside unless Easy Clean add-on has been selected, which can be selected at any time. Always remember to treat the equipment as your own. Always think 10 feet above you and 30 feet behind you while towing. Always take wider corners than normal. When traveling through tight spaces, travel as straight as possible. Always watch out for park strip trees or low hanging trees wherever you're traveling, whether it be parking at your house or at a campground or so on. Always watch out for curbs, hence the wider corners. And always watch out for steep drives going in and out of sight of a gas station, for example, if it's a really big dip, uh, make sure that the trailer clears that. In this video, what we will do is we will go through the outside of the trailer, hooking up the trailer, and the inside of the trailer, and then wrap up from there. So from here, let's go to the outside of the trailer. Okay, we're at the trailer now, and when you have arrived at the location which you have chosen, the trailer will be all ready, it'll just be locked up. So as you come, and if there's a bunch of trailers, you'll find the trailer with the code from the email that you received, and then the lockbox for the keys will be on the battery cover right here. And so you'll put the code that you have in that email on the lockbox, you'll open it up, and then you'll get the keys out. And this trailer will have four keys. It'll have two door keys, and then we'll have a key for the outside storage doors, and then we'll have a key for the lock box, or it's for the uh, hitch lock here. So these red hitch locks. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and unlock the hitch, and then we'll hook up and go from there. Okay, hooking up the trailer is fairly simple. First, the adjustable hitch here, which is included with the rental, it comes with the 2 and 5 16 inch ball, which is what you need to tow this trailer with. It can go uh, a drop or a rise, so if the L goes up or it goes down when you put it in the receiver here. So it just depends on the height of your truck. So the easiest way to do this is you put the, the adjustable hitch in the receiver, and then you measure from the ground to the top of the ball 22 inches and that should get you about a level toe. There is a, a, a tape measure in the cabinet above the sink in a plastic bin that you can use to make that measurement. Again, it's 22 inches from the ground to the top of the ball when you've got the adjustable hitch installed. And again, it's the 2 and 5 16 inch ball, which is the larger of the two balls on this hitch. So. Easy enough is that you install the hitch, you um, uh, back up your tow vehicle until the ball is underneath the coupler here. And then you just crank it down. You can, you don't have to be perfectly spot on because you can move the front of this trailer around if you need to. But you'll want to take the jack all the way up. I won't do it in this video, but you'll crank it all the way up. Uh, you'll pull this pin out and you'll slide this latch forward. Now if this latch gets like stuck right here, it's not sliding all the way forward, that means that the ball is too far back in the coupler. The easiest way to fix that is just pull forward a little bit and then the ball will pull forward in there. Or sometimes you can kind of just shake this and it will slide the ball into place. So you want to make sure that latch is there and then you're going to put the pin back in so that doesn't come unlatched. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your safety chains here and you're going to hook them on one side or on each side like so and you're going to take your breakaway cable what happens if everything else fails this pulls and it locks the brakes on the trailer and then you're going to take your seven-way connection and you'll go ahead and plug it into your seven-way on your trailer you want to make sure that that is snug and that is plugged in now if you rented the bluetooth trailer brake controller uh it is a module it will be inside the 
the camper when you pick it up and um, that's a module that goes in between the seven-way connection and the tow vehicle and then you download an app on your phone and you Bluetooth to it and then your phone is the trailer brake controller so really simple to to do that uh, to hook all of that up and what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and do a walk around of the outside of the trailer and we'll go from there all right, we're on the outside of the trailer now, and the first thing I want to know is the awning. So the awning is the number one damaged item on the trailer. So you just got to be very careful. Again, think 10 feet above you. Always make sure that you're watching low-hanging trees, whether in a campground, especially park strip trees at your house, um, or anything like that that you could hit the awning on. Also, when you are camping, you want to retract the awning when you are away from the camper. So just in case some wind comes and tears the awning or something like that, you always want to make sure the awning is closed when you're away from it or if there's any wind or inclement weather or where you're when you're asleep or anything like that. Again, you don't want to replace an awning. It's not fun and either do I. So again, make sure that you think 10 feet above you while you're driving and make sure you track the awning when you're away from it. So let's go around the outside here. Uh, the first thing, I just wanna show you where the storage is. So this is one of the storage areas here. And so in this storage area, you're gonna have uh, two extra chocks. When you pick up the trailer, there'll be two chocks. So there'll be four or two chocks on the wheel already. So you have four chocks total. This is a leveling block right here. So this is what you'll use to level the trailer side to side. You'll put it down and then you'll pull one side of the trailer up onto this to get the trailer level. And then you use the, the front tongue jack to level front to back. Uh, you've got the adjustable hitch here. Of course, if you have your own, you can use your own. Um, you've got the crank down for the jacks or for the stabilizing jacks. You've got your 30 amp power cord here. Uh, you've got the water hose right here with a pressure regulator on it. Um, you want to make sure you always use that pressure regulator when you're using any water, uh, city water or at a campground or something like that because the pressure is too high for a trailer. So you need the pressure regulator on that. Now we do dump the tanks when you return so you don't have to worry about that. But if you want to dump them while you're camping, uh, you do have the sewer hoses here to do that. There's also a broom with a dustpan in here too. So we got our stabilizing jacks right here. Um, and Lippert has a video. They go very in depth on these stabilizing jacks. Um, so that will be in the description of this video if you want to watch that. Because these are a little bit different than like your standard scissor jacks. Um, but they are fairly simple. Um, so you're just going to use the crank to crank down here. Uh, you're going to put it on there and you're going to crank it down. And then it is adjustable. Again, make sure that you do not use these to level the trailer. You only use these to stabilize the trailer. So again, you level a trailer side to side with the leveling block and then front to back with the tongue jack. And then you put these down to stabilize it so it's not as wobbly. So let's just go around here. We've got our propane tank here. Um, so it's plenty of propane. And then you've got your on off here. So just make sure this is on if you're trying to run any, um, run any appliances that run off of propane. And then make sure you turn it off when you are traveling. Got your batteries right here. They are upgraded dual six volt batteries. Everything in the trailer will run off the batteries or the propane except for the microwave the AC, and then there's 120 volt like house style outlets. Those three things, you will need a power source or a generator. We do rent generators, which will run those if you wanna rent one. Right here is the water heater access panel. So it is a tankless water heater. I'll show you the control panel when we go into the bathroom. But one thing to note on this is that uh, if it drops below about 40 degrees, this will try and ignite to keep it from freezing. But if you have the propane off, like say you're traveling, um, it'll try and ignite and then it will fault. It'll give an E1 error on the control panel, which again, I'll show you in the bathroom. Um, but how to reset that, you can just open this 
and then there's a there's an on off so you just turn this to off which that o is off right now and then the line is on so you turn it off turn it back on it'll reset that uh, obviously you'll want to turn the propane on or else it'll try and light and give the same error but you will really need to reset that if you do get that error um, here we've got the trailer will come full with fresh water but if you need to refill it um, you can just use uh, a hose that's used for potable water so not just any hose that you've been using but a hose with potable water you can put it in there and you can fill up the fresh water tank that way um, there's city water connection which again you can use the hose in the storage area with the pressure regulator it's easy if, if you put the pressure regulator on the connection to the city water not here but you can put it on either side so that's if you have water at a campground or so on. Um, there is an outside shower, just ask you to not use it. it, it they're just kind of problematic is really the reason why. If you need to drain the fresh water tank, you can easily do so with that white handle. You just pull it out and all the fresh water will drain out of the tank. <clears throat> Going here to the tires. So this trailer has the adventure package, so it has factory flipped axles and has bigger tires. So these are really nice meaty tires. And then it has a uh, pressure gauge here that is green. And if it drops too low, it'll go red, which is really nice because then you can just look at it and see if it's going low and you probably have like a, a nail or something um, and you can put the spare, spare tire on. But that's what that is, is just a quick reference for uh, tire pressure again stabilizing jacks on the back so there's four total um, one on each corner again stabilizing jacks not leveling jacks do not try and level the trailer you will break them um, you got your sewer connections again we will dump the tanks when you return that is one great benefit of renting from easy camper rental but if you do will need to dump them uh, you can use these so these are actually open right now this trailer is brand new and that's why because they come like that but this would be closed and then this would be closed here and then um, what you would do is that you would take this cap off here and you would put the pressure uh, the sewer hose on it you'd run it into the sewer outlet and then you would pull the black water which is the left one the black water first with the black handle because that's the sewer so that's the toilet and then once that's all done you shut that and then you pull the gray one which is the gray water which that's your uh, shower and sinks so that will kind of help flush out the hose too so that's how the sewer hoses work here is your 30 amp connection here so uh, the 30 amp cord is in the storage area uh, if you do need to go from 30 amp down to 20 amp, there is a 30 to 20 amp adapter in the cabinet above the sink in a plastic box. But you would plug in the 30 amp cord to here, and then you would run, uh, and then on the other side of that cord, you would put the adapter on it, and then you could run an extension cord from that if you needed more, um, or you can just plug it into a regular 15 amp like at your house. But um, any RV park should have a 30 amp um, connection, but you'll put it in and then it does twist and kind of locks in there and then you twist to the left to pull it out. Um, there is a ring on it that you can spin on. It's not really necessary, but again, put it in and twist and then twist back and pull out. So you got your full size spare right here. You, there is a backup camera on these. Um, it isn't something that's supported because you do have to download an app on your phone. There's all third party software involved. So it's not something I can really support, but if you can get it to work, um, there is a QR code by the control panel. So as immediately you walk in to the trailer, if you look to your left, there's a QR code. You can scan that and download the app. Uh, I will say that one thing to note on that is that power to the backup camera comes from the running lights so you got to make sure your lights are on on your truck so the running lights on the trailer are on uh, to get power to it so that's one trick but again not something i can support uh, we've got a another door for storage here so this is underneath the bunk which is nice big storage area one thing to note on this is that uh, this lock, this is the deadbolt, and this is the lock for just this part of it. Uh, this is kind of 
backwards. So if you twist to your right, it actually unlocks it. And if you twist to the left, then it locks it. So just keep that in mind when you're locking and unlocking. Uh, there's some outside uh, speakers. Again, the, the radio is not supported either because there's just, um, you know, channels might not be working. But if you want to use the radio, there is speakers on the inside and outside. I believe it does have dual zones so you can turn off the speakers on the in outside and only have the speakers on the inside and vice versa. Uh, but there are speakers throughout the, the trailer. Uh, this is the outlet or the exhaust for the heater. So don't touch this if you have your heater going because it is very hot. Um, right here is, we ask that you do not use this. Uh, there usually is a mini fridge in there. It's been taken out just because, again, it's 120 volt. It doesn't work on the batteries. It's just not really the greatest thing for camping anyways. So again, let's uh, go on the inside and then we can go from there. The inside is really easy. Again, this is the lock for the deadbolt, uh, or the, sorry, this is the lock for the handle. This is locked for a deadbolt. Usually only the deadbolt's locked when you show up. And again, you twist to the left or to the right to unlock, twist to the left to lock it. And then these stairs, they're already down right now, but I'll kind of show you how those work. So really nice stable steps. And so you got this blue handle right here that you would pull and then you can pull these down. You got to make sure the door is all the way open or it's see it right there. It's even snagging it. Um, so you got to make sure that's all the way open and then you can let these down. And then this might even be a little bit too high, but you got to watch right here because if this is too high, uh, then the door will hit. You won't be able to shut the door. So the way you adjust that is very simple. You've got these little tabs right here and you push them in and you see all these like notches. This is a notch for each one. So you push that in and it will slide down a notch and then you can adjust these legs for how long they are. And even, and if you're on um, unstable ground, you can have one laying longer than the other. And then you got really stable steps. So let's uh, go on the inside and go from there. When you first come on the inside to your left, there is the control panel. And this is the QR code I was talking about for the backup camera. You can download an app and then there's a bunch of stuff in that app. And part of that is the control for the backup camera. Uh, you can do that. You can try that if you want. Again, don't support the backup camera, but you can try it. Um, some things to note right here, put some stickers up here is to uh, always make sure the water pump is off when you're not using it. So if you have city water, you have pressure from there. But even if you are leaving the campground, you wanna turn off the city water, just in case if anything breaks, then you don't wanna flood the trailer. Same thing with the water pump, it's an on-demand pump. So the best practice is you turn the pump on, you do what you need to do with it, and then you turn it off. You don't leave it on all the time. Cause again, if something broke, it would just keep pumping water, it would flood the trailer. So again, turn on the water pump, do what you need to do, turn off the water pump. Again, same with city water. If you're away, turn it off. Um, the other thing, which I mentioned multiple times, retract the awning in wind or any inclement weather. Again, it's the number one damage item, so just be very mindful of the awning. The other thing is the sensors aren't great in these tanks, so, um, when you pick up the trailer, it will be empty. The, uh, the, the, well, the fresh water will be full, but the black water and the gray water will be empty. I promise you, um, it will be empty. However, when you're going through these sensors right here, you've got your battery, um, you put, just push the button and then it'll light them up. And then you've got your fresh water tank, it's showing empty. You got your black water tank showing empty. You got your gray water tank showing empty. These black, sometimes gray, they can get debris stuck on the top sensor and then they just read full, even if they're empty. So again, that happens. So if you do push the black button and it says it's full, I promise you it's empty. Um, it's just, you know, unfortunate thing with all travel trailers, not just mine. Um, and so then you get your gray water. So black water is your sewer, which is your toilet. Um, gray water is your sink and your showers. Fresh water is your fresh water tank and then battery are your batteries. Again, with the batteries, everything in the trailer will run off the batteries or the propane, except for the microwave, AC, and 120 volt household outlets. Um, if you do plug into um, any power, 
then it will charge the batteries. There is solar on this, um, 200 watts of solar. It'll charge the batteries too, um, which is really nice. Uh, but that's also dependent on, you know, sun hitting those solar panels and so on. So it's not 100% reliable because you just don't know for sure how much sun you're gonna get. Um, there's also generators uh, that you can rent or bring your own as long as it's an inverter generator. Um, and then those will charge the batteries too. Again, you've got your water pump switch here. So water pump on, off. Uh, this does have heated tanks. Um, unless it's really, really cold, you don't really need to use those. Um, this is the awning lights for the outside. And then this is a light switch for, there's a, a, a small light by the back door um, and then it's also got a switch on it so I don't know why there's a switch on here too but uh, that's you have to turn that on and they have to turn the light on the outside that's, that's what that's for all the lights on the inside here are just push button so you just push the button to turn them on and off so for example there's a button right here turn it on and off um, this the slide right now is out that's why it's so spacious in here um, but to slide it in and slide it out, so there's the slide in, slide out. And what you do is you just hold it down until it goes all the way out and then keep holding it down. Even when it stops, keep holding it down for like three seconds, you'll hear a click and then that's when you can let it out. Same with in and, you know, slide in until it stops and then three seconds it will click and that's when you can stop awning it's an electric awning so you can go extend or retract the awning with that too so very simple so let's start in the front here uh, we've got a queen bed again this is a mattress protector this is not a sheet so you still want to put a sheet or a blanket or something over the top of this this is just to protect the mattress so you don't want to sleep on the mattress protector even though it is soft uh, this is a memory foam mattress, so it is upgraded. Another reason to rent from Easy Camper Rental, because uh, the mattresses that come in trailers are terrible. Uh, you got some storage up here underneath the tray or the bed. Here you can lift up that handle, and you can get to the outside storage underneath here. Uh, over here, it does have an inverter. Um, I think it's 150 watts, uh, so which I don't. Think we'll run a CPAP I'm not sure but even if you did it, it has a fan in it because um, it you know inverts the electricity so it's pretty loud and it'd be right by your head so you wouldn't want to sleep with something going there but this this one will actually work this will uh, work off the battery so this outlet you can you know run a laptop or something like that and it will run off the batteries because this is an inverter but all the other 120 volt outlets you have to have a power source uh, just a few things to read right here. Um, no smoking in the trailer. Uh, you do have a USB-C and standard USB, both there and right there. It's got a very large slide out in the dinette with storage underneath. So with these, you pull up and then out and then up and then in. So don't try and just yank them open. They'll get stuck right there. Don't yank them, pull up and then out. You can make this down into a bed. So very simple is what you do is you take the tabletop off of these legs right here. So you take the legs out down here, take the legs out up here. And so you just have the tabletop. And then there's a little bit of Velcro right here. And that Velcro matches up with that. So you take the tabletop off, you put the tabletop down on this ledge right here and make sure it's resting on the ledge because if it's off, and it's like up on this piece, and then you sit on it, it will break the tabletop. So just make sure that you have it on that ledge. And then you just push all the cushions together and it makes a bed out of this dinette. Got more storage right there. And then you got your two bunks back here. And they're pretty good sized. I'd say they're smaller than a full, but they're, they're a good sized bunk bed, especially in a bunk house uh, this size. Your radio is right here. So again, it's not something that's supported, but you can use it um, if you want. I, they, they should work. There's no reason they shouldn't, but again, not something that can really support because you might be trying to use your phone or something like that. You got your kitchen area with your sink. This is a hand sanitizer thing, but there's no sanitizer or soap in it, so it's not gonna be useful. 
but uh, you do have your sink here. Um, you got some more storage down here. You got some storage up here. And then up here, you're gonna have that plastic bin um, that I mentioned before. Uh, it's gonna have a few things in it. There'll also be an instruction manual specific to this trailer up here in case you don't have access to this video anymore. So you can look at that and it will show you screenshots on how to run everything. In the kitchen area here, we've got the burner. So this has this glass top over it, but make sure that you lift this up and out of the way before you light any of these burners. If you light the burner and that's down, it will break the glass. So make sure that this is up out of the way. And then while you're traveling, you just put it back down. The burners are pretty simple. Again, the propane's not on, um, but you would turn it to light and it will auto light. Um, if you've got a gas stove at your house, it's the same way. Uh, you've got a light and a fan here. You've got a microwave. Again, it won't work off the batteries, only off of shore power or a generator, but it works just like every other microwave. Um, this is where your heater will come out of. So the, the heat for the heater will come out of right here. Um, up here, you've got your air conditioner. So pretty straightforward. Um, you've got like your high, this not plugged in, so it's not gonna work. Cause again, this will only run off, this won't run off the batteries. It will only run off of a generator or um, electrical source. So uh, you've got your temperature control knob here, blue for colder, red for hotter. Um, you've got off, you can just use it as a fan or you can use high cool or so on. Um, just one thing to note is that if you run ACs for a long time, they can freeze up and they will they will continue to blow, but they won't blow cold air. So you have to turn them off and let them thaw out. It doesn't take very long, like 30 minutes. And then you can generally turn it back on, it'll start working again. So just know you can freeze these up. So just be mindful of that. <clears throat> and then we've got our fridge here, fridge and freezer. So this is really nice. The, the whole industry has gone this way. So these are 12 volt fridges. They work off of the batteries um, and they work really well. They've, they've gone away from the, the gas electric fridges they had in older trailers and all the newer trailers are going with these 12 volt fridges. They work exactly like the fridge in our house with a condenser that blows cold air. So they're much more efficient than they used to be and they can actually cool down much faster. So this one's really easy. Uh, you can pull from this side, this fridge, kind of gimmicky, but you can pull from this side. I don't know why you'd need to, but you can open it from either side. And then the freezer down here, you just push and you can open the freezer that way. The controls for this are up here. So OF means off. Um, if you can see that in the video with it blinking, but that says OF. To start it, you just hold this down for five seconds and it says, five seconds on it so it's pretty self-explanatory but that's how you turn it on um the green check means everything's good uh this would would mean that it's over um amperage and then under amperage so or voltage sorry over voltage would mean the batteries have too high of a voltage uh, which is very rare and then under voltage means there's just not battery capacity and it's not going to be able to run it so that's what that means uh, this one's set in Fahrenheit. You can change them with these buttons here. So that's going to tell me my uh, freezer temp. That's going to tell me my fridge temp. And then I can adjust it within its own parameters with the plus or minus buttons. And then to turn it off while you're, um, I mean, you can use this while you're traveling. That's what's really nice about these 12 volts. But to turn it off, when you drop it off, hold that down, then it turns off. Get your thermostat for your heater right here. So very easy, all the way to the left, and as it says right here, is off. So all the way to your left, that's off. And then as you, and again, this is a thermostat. This isn't a temperature gauge. So if you turn it all the way up, it's not going to warm up faster. It's just going to eventually get so hot and probably trip the heater, and you don't want that. So all you do with this is you just turn it, to where you want your temperature. So like 70 degrees is about right there. Um, you know, and that's, that's where it's telling you the temperature is on the inside right now. And so that's what this means is on or off. So you can hear the, you can probably hear the fan blowing and you can hear it sparking. 
but the propane's not on, so it's not gonna light. But that's all you do. Very simple, and then to turn it off, you just push it all the way to the left. It will click. Uh, that The heater will run for 30 more seconds or so, and then it will shut off. Down here, you've got fuses. So you push this in, it pops out. Get your breakers and your fuses. So if you do have anything like pop a breaker, you'll see if it's tripped here or if any of the fuses right here are uh, broken, there should be a light that lights up next to it. But um, it's pretty rare that, you know, fuses any pop. Uh, this is a propane and CO2 sensor. So first thing I wanna note is, unfortunately these do false alarm not a lot but every so often the main thing is if you cover this up it'll false alarm if you have a pet that breathes on it it'll false alarm if you use aerosol spray of any kind inside the trailer it'll false alarm so there's a lot of ways you can set this off so if it goes off don't panic it's most likely a false alarm what you want to do is just clear the trailer let it air out if it keeps going off then you might have an issue. Uh, definitely make sure that, you know, there isn't a knob on this that's like open or something letting propane come in. Um, but usually you can smell propane. But uh, yeah, that, that just to note, they're, they're, these do false alarms. So don't go crazy if it does go off on you. Um, this is a battery disconnect. You don't really need to worry about that, but if your kids Flip that and pull it out. Nothing in the trailer is going to work. So just make sure that that's in. If you're like, oh, why isn't the, the lights working or something? Then just make sure that that is. See, all the lights turned off. Now they're back on. All right, let's go into the bathroom here. So it's a pretty good sized bathroom. Uh, and you got a sink with some storage down here. Uh, you got a medicine cabinet up here. Again, you've got uh, 120 volt outlets that are only gonna work off of shore power or a generator. This is your control panel for your water heater here. Uh, again, I recommend that you set it to 100 degrees and don't mix it with cold water. Again, you can adjust it, but the whole idea is that you wanna just set it to the temperature that you want it to be. You don't wanna set it to like 115 degrees and then have to mix it with cold water. It just makes everything more difficult. So again, just set it to 100 degrees and um, just go from there. And you can turn this off, you know, on off with the button there. There is some uh, spare toilet paper in here, a few rolls for you. Uh, the toilet, again, is a, it is a flush toilet. It'll work with the tab, you know, foot flush here. Um, and then just make sure that you're not flushing any you know, trash or food or any non-RV toilet paper or paper towels or Kleenexes or diapers, whatever. That's just going to clog things up. Please just keep it to human waste and proper toilet paper um, if you can. And then we've got our shower here. Uh, we've got our cold and hot knobs here. Just go up to your shower. You can turn the shower head on and off. Um, again, there's not a lot of uh, water in the fresh water tank. And then you can fill the gray water tank really quick. And there's a telltale sign if you fill the gray water tank, it will start backfilling into the bathtub. So the bathtub is not clogged. It's just you filled your gray water tank. Um, so again, when you're showering, you don't have an unlimited source of water. You also don't have an unlimited outlet of water. So the best thing to do is just get in, get wet, turn it off, soap up, turn it back on, rinse off, and then be done. Um, so you just want to make it quick and that'll make things a lot better for you. So that's a walkthrough of the inside of the trailer. Let's go to wrap up. Thank you again for renting from Easy Camper Rental. You might want to bring a couple tools along just in case you get a flat tire. It's very rare, but it can happen. Uh, you just need a socket set, maybe a breaker bar or a large wrench. If you have an impact wrench, that would be good too. Um, if your tow vehicle doesn't have a jack in it, you might want to bring a small jack or something like that. But uh, again, very rare, but just better to be prepared. 
And please remember to return the camper clean inside and outside unless easy clean add-on was added, which can be added at any time. You will receive a text the morning of drop-off, and if possible, please text back a couple hours before drop-off so we can plan logistics. Upon drop-off, please call or text and let us know if you have any questions or concern. Please let us know if there are any maintenance items that may need to be addressed. These are earthquakes going down the road, so things do come loose. Sometimes uh, outlet might stop working or something like that. And just please let us know so we can take care of that for you. And that concludes the walkthrough. Safe travels, enjoy your vacation, and remember to be the happiest camper.